Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or any time you are coming across this video. If it's your first time and you like what we are doing, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. I want to seize this opportunity to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform that we are using to educate and inform the members of the public. At the same time, put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, we do not promote hate speech, we do not promote violence, promote misleading information. What we are here is we educate, inform, and we react to all forms of videos. And also to remind YouTube that a call for self-determination is not a call for war. At the Lekki Toll Plaza yeah. and um, at um, Ojota, yeah. Not yet. They haven't come yet. I hear that in, yeah. in Underbridge, Ikeja. Procession has Procession. started. Though. I mean, I mean if, if they're ready for us, we can go to Ikeja, no, Underbridge. Yeah, we'll, but, we'll go to them very but, shortly. But when they're ready. Okay, I think we have them. So, Ikeja, Underbridge, are you there? I believe Obaudeoye is reporting from Ikeja, Underbridge. Oba, can you hear us? Thank you. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Just hold on. It's rebooting the system. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, we, we can just hear. So I think they're, they're trying to recalibrate things and uh, yeah. definitely. This is the most vehicular movement I've yeah. seen, at least across the different locations yeah. that we've gone to. Yeah. Uh, aside from the Lekki Toll Plaza where there are a few cars going, you know, at the toll gate. But yeah. here there's actually some bit of traffic. I don't yes. know if it's as a result of the procession. Or just that more people are on the streets. We can see security okay, agents, see security agents there. there and yeah. We can see some buses there. Well, at least you can see a lot of uh, Kekemaru yeah. and yeah. tricycles. Yeah. Tricycles yeah. There. Okay. there. So I think that's the procession uh, going there. You can see them accompanied by security agents, and you can see the procession going at the front there. So uh, this is quite. I think this is about the largest congregation of people so we far, have yes. seen thus far. You know, coming out at the Kedja on the bridge and they were uh, followed by police. So I think the procession is still on in and around that area on the Kedja on the bridge. And uh, the camera is trying to pan and recalibrate things around. Also, Oba, if you can hear us now, I think you've been able to recalibrate things. Oba, uh, I know it's a very tedious one for you today, but uh, if you're settled, take it away, my brother. Tell us what's going on. What are we seeing? Yes, um, we are in Ikeja right now. The protesters just left um, the popular Ikeja under bridge, very close to the computer village. And it has been a marathon for us because we had to, you know, run to catch up with them at every point in time that we're trying to set up this live. Now, we had to pick, um, you know, a tricycle to be ahead of them, to be where I am right now at the moment. So you can see them right behind me. They are trekking from here. Some say they are going to uh, the Alausa Secretariat. That's the seat of government. Others say they are going from here to K2, but we are not sure what the route will look like until maybe we get to that junction there. But at the moment, they are singing all manners of protest songs, and you can see inscriptions on their placards. We need to grant not loans. That is one beside me here. I don't know if the camera can see it. We need study grant not loans. That's talking about the recently uh, launched uh, government. Uh, let, let me speak to one of the leaders of the protest here. His name is Comrade Declan. Declan, good morning. Thank you so much. You have been sweating? Yes, I need to. So tell me, what, what's this, what, what, are your, what are your demands specifically? Our demands are very simple. Our demands are written in the faces of hungry Nigerians. Our demand is written on the faces of the streets of Nigeria. Now, what we are succeeded in doing this morning is to tell the government that you cannot hold the people back. In spite of all their court rulings, court judgment that they got, what we're saying is that they said they designated Ojota and K2, but before you move to K2 or Ojota, you must have a house. And an average Nigerian does not have a house. And so most of us slept under the bridge today, under the bridge of Ikeja, and that's our home. So we have just woken up from our house under the bridge, and we're moving to the place government has given us as our own flat. So we're moving to our own flat, to the accommodation given to us by the government. But what we're saying is very simple, that the message has been sent that no intimidation can stop 
Okay. Hungry and angry Nigeria. All right, Declan, I'll come back to you. I'm with you throughout uh, the protest. So that's the situation right now in the city of Ikeja. That's the capital of Lagos. And you can hear him. They are moving from here to Ketu. That's about several kilometers away from here. It's going to be a very long day for the protesters. The security men are here providing security, safety for the protesters. We see how this goes. Some say it's Alausa, some say it's Ketu. But we see how it goes. We are still with them. Back to you in the studio, Rufai. Okay, thank you so much. We take it away, Abuja. Abuja, we have you. Ulugwe Gashiro, talk to us. Abuja. Yeah, thank you, Rufai Oseni, Ayo Myers, and Dr. Abati once again. Gashiro, talk to us. Abuja. Yeah, thank you, Rufai Oseni, Ayo Myers, and Dr. Abati once again. Uh, the situation is really getting tense as uh, there is a flare up of emotion, strong, passionate emotions here, and all is in a bid to secure a better future for the country. Uh, but recently, just um, of, of late, there is a bit of a misunderstanding between the protesters and the police uh, based on the court judgment that uh, gave a restrictive order for them to do it in a, in, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a restricted area. So the commissioner of police is saying that they should the protesters should move into the stadium and not get across the streets to, uh, to uh, create an obstruction for the free flow of movements. Uh, so we have here the commissioner of police in Abuja, uh, Mr. Ben Igwe. Thank you for joining us on Arise News. Thank uh, you. What's the situation? There seems to be a misunderstanding earlier on. There is no misunderstanding. We have a court judgment on subs, uh, court ruling, court order on subsistence service, which the barrister, barrister Deji Adeyanju is leading them, is aware of. The subsistence service said that the order is that they should protest inside the stadium. And we requested that each group that we, that we uh, protest has to come to the police and notify the police. No group has notified the police. We only came here to see some people here, and we said, for the fact you have not notified us and you want to protest, follow the court order, which the Jade and you, the barrister, is aware. The order said, protest inside the stadium. We are not stopping anybody from protesting, but look at how they are blocking the express road. And I said no, because we are their right stops, we are another man's own stops. Because as they are infringing into the right of way of people, it's not good. They are equally trapping on other people's rights on passage. And that's why I said no. They should enter the stadium where the court has given order that they should enter inside. They should carry out their 1,000 pressmen and enter the stadium and protest. They can transmit it to 2,000 world press. I don't care. So, have you spoken with Mr. Dejari Oju on this? Yes, I've spoken with him. He said I should give him three hours for him to organize them to enter into the stadium. I'm, 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 I'm giving him three hours. Okay. Um, so, what, what are your plans today? I'm here. This, uh, I am here. I am here. Okay. So... Dr. Well, Ruben, uh, Ayo, and Rufai, uh, that is the situation. But can you ask uh, him a question? Have any questions? Yes. For the can you ask him? Can you ask him that uh, in the event that uh, the protesters refuse to go inside, because it's possible they may also not listen to DG Ade Ade Yonju. He has a, a law enforcement officer and who is responsible for security in Abuja. What options are available to him? in the case of recalcitrance on the part of the protesters. Okay, um, the Commissioner, uh, should the protesters refuse to go in, uh, because there is an obvious possibility of uh, the protesters being recalcitrant, uh, what are the options available for they are, you? Then they are not law abiding. It's not me that gave the ruling. It's court order. So, what so if, if, are you if, they want, if they want to breach the court order, they, will they are breaching the court order. It's not my order. It's not the order of the Inspector General of Police. It's so not the order so, of anybody. So what will he it's do? The order of, uh, so the what options are available? What will he do? The court. So, uh, if they so if they're doing it, are, if they're doing it against do? court order, they know they are equally disobeying. So the what court are the consequences? Order. They should know the consequence. The barrister is here. You don't know the consequences. The barrister is here. He knows the consequence of so, disobeying court order. Okay, are you willing to tell us the consequence? I'm not willing to tell you any because he knows the consequence. He's that is leading them. Okay, let's invite uh, Barrister Deji Adeyoju. Yes. He's here, also here with us. Yes. Uh, we understand that the police commissioner has appealed to you, has spoken to you, 
that uh, you should move the protesters inside, which is according to the court injunction. That's according to the police commissioner. Uh, what's your response to this? The protesters are, are, are the, the protesters are at the stadium. Are we not in the national stadium? We are there. The court order say national stadium. They have refused to allow us to go to Igu Square. We say we will not confront no, them. What the police commissioner is saying that inside the uh, national uh, stadium. Oh, the court, the court order said stadium, national stadium. That's what the court order say. Can you man die? Can you man bury him? You understand? Can you man die? Can you man? He's a can man. I'm also a can man. So he has spoken to you now as the commissioner of police in Abuja. Are you willing to? Are, are we not co complying? Are we not at the state? Are we at Igu Square? Okay, but if he this is my big brother, if he insists that you should move into the national stadium, yeah, then they have to carry us in. Yes, I've gone to speak does. as the lawyer. I've advised the protesters. I said, listen, if no matter how uncomfortable you are with a positive court order, whether it is interim, interlocutory, or perpetual, you must try to comply. You must, the, the law must see you taking steps to comply. You can see that. People kept it, but protesters called me as early as 5 a.m. 5 this morning and said they're going to stop the, the Eagle Square. And I advised them that they should not go there. That they should not go to the Eagle Square because if they do that, they'll be disobeying the court order. Okay, you know, so we, we, we spoke to the police commissioner earlier on about the options of you refusing to move inside the stadium. And he said, you are, you are aware of the consequences. So are you prepared for the consequences? And what do you think would be the consequences of you not moving into the main bowl of the national stadium? Very simple answer. Simple answer. You see, because we are in the stadium, we are within the ambit of the law, complying with the positive order of the court. Because we are in the, we are in the vicinity of the national stadium. Do you understand? We are not in the three-arm zone. That is why, you see, my appeal before the CP came, you see how peaceful and serene the place was. But with the CP's presence, the atmosphere is charged. So my appeal to my bigger, big brother is that you should not take steps that will make the protest degenerate. It's an appeal. You understand? Thank God that he's somebody that I respect and he has a lot of respect and regard for me. So my, my, uh, the idea of me coming here is that I will keep appealing to the protesters and I will keep appealing to the authorities because without this synergy, the country cannot work, and this protest will not be as peaceful as we want it. So, I, let me further appeal to the CP, who is my brother, that he should de-escalate the situation. Do you understand? Okay. He's, a, he's a conflict manager. Okay. Um, you, we're still talking about consequences here, yeah. Yeah. and the police commissioner felt so sure that you know the consequence of disagreeing with him on this issue. Okay, where, where are we? Are we not at the national stadium? We are at the National Stadium. That's why I have spoken about the issue of Kone Mandai, Kone okay, Mamberi. Okay, obviously, yes. you don't want to talk about the consequence of moving Which into the National Stadium. Which consequence? Because we are in the National Stadium. Okay, but, but now, talking about consequences. And, and, and you know that I've actually not seen the order. I've not seen the order. All, all, I, have seen, all I have seen are news, news reports. And because, because I'm a lawyer, I, am, I, I must, whether the order is genuine or not, I must advise the protesters to comply. Okay, okay. finally, the, the federal government has called for constructive engagement yeah. with the government between and the mass and the protesters. Yeah. Uh, are, are you considering having such a constructive engagement? Believe me, today, if the federal government, if the president bring back for a subsidy, we will be, we will, we will be hailing him here. Yes. We will be hailing the president. See, see, all these people that are pushing the president, they, they, did, not, they did not win an election. They don't have... They don't have the mandate of the people. Them, it is the president that has the mandate of the people, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The ministers don't have the mandate. The aides don't have the mandate. CP, my brother, does not have the mandate. It is the president that has the mandate. So, whatever the president does in the best interest of Nigeria, okay. it is the president that we, 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 we need to wrap up now. We'll come back to you later. Um, talking about the mandate, is a lawyer and also the lead convener of this protest and uh, you have seen that uh, there, there are clear demands which involves reversal of the first subsidy uh, issue, the, the first subsidy uh, situation Thank and also so the need to end Thank bad you, governance Benja. and also to end hunger in the land. Thank so you, that's Benja. the situation right here from the MQ Abiola Stadium. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much Dr. Ruben Abati. Rufai Hosseini and Ayo Maris. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Wenger. Thank you so much for also doing a quick mediation job. We go back to the Niger Delta.
Theophilus Agiri joins us now from Bielsa State. Great to have you. I, I trust you are Yenagua. How is Yenagua yeah, this morning? Yeah, Yenagua is a bit uh, more activities are beginning to gel up uh, with this protest coming up. Uh, we had some of the protesters uh, coming around here, converging uh, at the Tombia uh, roundabout. This is one of the busiest locations in uh, Bayelsa State. This is because of the fact that this place connects uh, uh, local governments, some local government areas to Bayelsa State. We have seen quite an assemblage of, uh, uh, of protesters who are youths. And as you can see, as you can see, they are moving around. They are going, from what I gathered, they are moving, they are having their procession and they are moving from here to the government house. But all around we also have security. We also have security men who have been stationed around this whole environment. So it's quite a busy, it's quite busy around this place right now as we speak. Alright, uh, it would be really good if you could speak to one of them because I see uh, the placards being um, carried by the protesters. One says cut uh, spending in governance, Other, another says increase police salary. That is, you know, they're asking for more money for policemen and they're also asking that they cut cost of governance. Can you speak to anyone there at least to get what is, is it that the youths in Bayelsa are asking for? I, I didn't get you, are you? Okay, so I was asking if you could speak to someone because we see what's written on the placards. What are the youths in Bayelsa asking for? Can you speak to any well, of the, the protesters? The demands of the protesters, uh, they are asking for improved quality of governance. They are asking for the reversal of the removal of fuel subsidy. They are asking for a unicameral uh, uh, legislation and they are also asking for improve, improvement in the welfare of Nigerians. Basically, they are asking for welfare and they are asking for the government to restructure the country in such a way so that the people in this part of the country can, can breathe. To quote the, 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 our president, the, uh, uh, Bola Ahmed. Theophilus, the, uh, the, the, the governor I've intervened to say there is no public holiday and that people should go about their normal businesses. Are people out uh, in government offices, in the markets, or they are staying at home? And then secondly, where is uh, uh, Asari Dokubo who had said that nobody should come to the Niger Delta, otherwise they will collect the Wutu Wutu. Have you heard anything in that regard? Is there a group that is on the street saying, don't protest. Well, uh, the Bayasa state government has uh, directed civil servants to be at their duty posts, and uh, he has also told people to go about their lawful businesses. And this has happened. Uh, uh, even as the strike is going on, you can see people going about there are businesses, you can see people moving around, the traders, you know, and all that. And at the secretariat, I was at the secretariat this morning before now, and I, there were people going into the, the secretariat, civil servants. So while this is going on, every other thing is happening around, and people are going about, it's like there's some level of, uh, the level of, uh, what do I put it? Uh, some level people are not really connecting to the strike. I don't know whether this is as a result of the engagement that the governor has done with stakeholders. Uh, the, like yesterday, we, ha we, we the members of the youth community, community uh, members of the the student community. I'm talking about the NANS, the National Union of Bayelsa Students, and the Niger Delta University. They came out to say okay, that Theophilus. they will not be part of okay, the, this protest. And also, well, Theophilus, okay. Theophilus, we need to rush very quickly back to Lagos here, yeah? uh, where, where we'll cross over to Obadoye, a rice correspondent at the K2 area of Lagos State. Obadoye. Wow. Obadoye, are you with us?
or not. So we are going to allow sir okay. right now okay. and we'll be able to okay. to tell you if okay. the governor will be around to Oba. address them or not. Oba, stay safe, my brother. Just follow them. You know, burn some cabs, like we'll say, and have a good one. Let's go to Kaduna. My brother Nisi Gabriel is out there in KD City. Talk to me, my brother. How's it going there in Kaduna? Yeah, good to speak to you, Rufai. Good morning, Dr. Abati and yeah. uh, Ayo. Well, here in Kaduna, uh, the, the roads are deserted, just few people moving around. But it's good to note that uh, police operatives, security operatives are stationed at strategic locations. Just right behind me, you can see uh, police operatives are stationed at the popular Nepal roundabout here in Cardinal State. You have uh, motorcyclists moving around, but few people, most people here in Cardinal State are indoors. Just few people outside. Some filling stations are opened. Some businesses just you have some Mishai people opened and a relative peace here yeah, in Cardinal State. But we do understand that there's some places like Zaria, some persons are trying to gather to see if they can come out to protest. But we are still getting feelers from there to see if it's going to happen. And if it's happening, we'll move down there from here to Zaria is about 45 minutes. So we'll move down there to see what we can get. But here in the metropolis, here in Cardinal State, no sight of uh, individuals gathering to protest uh, because as of yesterday I projected this because Kadna has been relatively calm, peaceful and uh, we have security operatives scattered around um, the state. All right. Is it because of the meeting they had with the stakeholders, the leaders, the likes of uh, what was his name now, the Sheikh and um, also the Christian leaders and all of that and is it because they generally just like uh, the governor, you know, like they enunciated during the meeting. Is that the reason why you are seeing everything cool and calm in Kaduna? Or are there other area pockets that you don't know? What part of Kaduna are you? Is it southern Kaduna or the northern flank of Kaduna? Which, which flank are you, as we speak? I'm, I'm at Kaduna Central right Central. now, the okay. metropolis. Um, this is the popular, yeah, yeah, ne Nepal roundabout. I left Kaduna South, the, the popular Yakowa Expressway, earlier this morning. And just, we have, in fact, down the south, you have beehives of activity, more than you have uh, here in the Cardinal Central. And down to your question, in the weeks, during the week, throughout the week, uh, the governor has been engaging stakeholders, a lot of stakeholders meeting, a lot of dialogue, appealing to the conscience of these key stakeholders uh, that they should jettison, just jettison the planned nationwide protest. And it seems it's yielding results. And uh, like you pointed out, in that meeting, we had the likes of the Christian, uh, the Khan, the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Jamaatun Nasir Islam, the GNI, Student Union Body. We had key stakeholders from the southern part of Kaduna, and uh, they all unanimously agreed not to take part in this protest. Organized labor too. So to a large extent, the governor has been reaching, reaching out to key stakeholders, people you know, he knows have the capacity to galvanize uh, people to storm the streets to protest. And in his appeal, he cited Bloody protest history Kaduna has experienced in time past. We have uh, uh, the Zangu Qatar crisis, the 2000 political crisis that erupted here in, uh, in Kaduna, and several other uh, crises that erupted here in Kaduna and started as a result of peaceful protests like this one. So, Kaduna is a very unique state, I will put it that way, because it's a very sensitive state. Due to the sensitive nature of this state, no resident in this state will want to see this state uh, engulfed in some sort of crisis as a result of protests because now the residents are enjoying the relative peace uh, they, are, they are witnessing now in the states and uh, they will not want that uh, to be hijacked by uh, individuals who intend to cause mayhem in the states. That's what I've seen so far and that's what right. the people are saying. Down to Southern Cardinal uh, during the week too you had the Southern Cardinal Christian leaders led by Apostle Kure and he said for them their situation is unique because he described uh, according to him, he said, you can't send an injured soldier to war. And for them, they are just coming out from, they are, they're in the healing stage. And their situation is quite unique in the state because he said, in time past, they have been neglected by past administration. So for them, they can't join the protest. They just have, and he urged the, the people of Southern Cardinal to remain calm. Of course, that's not to say the constant, the, 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 that's not to say there's no economic hardship. There's no hunger or there's no insecurity. That is like a constant K. But however, he says 
there are ways to dialogue with the government and if Views dialogue is the best approach uh, to this issue. So generally, yeah, in Cardinal, so far so good. Well, it might be too early to say, but so far so good. Gabriel Nisi. Cardinal is a bit calm. Gabriel Nisi, you know in Cardinal alone, we understand that there has been a deployment of 25,000 security men, military, vigilante service, security. Do you think uh, it's because of that confidence building show of force as they titled it? that the people have just responded to the fair tactics of the security agencies uh, to come and confront uh, 25,000 security men will be quite uh, a foolhardy thing to do. Do you think that's why people are calm? Well, Dr. Ha Dr. Dr. Abati, I'm happy you brought this up. Well, just early this morning, the uh, PRO of the Cardinal State Police Command reached out and the first headquarters here in Cardinal issued a rejoinder stating that uh, the st earlier statement they issued saying that 25,000 uh, security personnel have been deployed across the state was an error. So he issued a rejoinder saying that adequate number of personnel have been deployed around the state and they intended to say 2,500, not 25,000 security personnel. A rejoinder has been issued okay. to that effect by the okay. Governor State okay. Police Command. Okay, Nisi, thank you so much. Let's pop quickly to Abuja, the country's capital. My brother, Ben Gashir, we hear that there are some more protesters uh, in Abuja. I think those are protesters against the protest. Protesters, they are there. Can you tell us the situation of what's happening there? Over to you. Thank you very much, Rufai Hosseini. Um, You know, uh, ahead of this protest, there were uh, gloomy predictions that um, there is something looming that uh, this protest might might likely be hijacked uh, by counter protesters. And um, what we've seen now is, if you look at my far down, far uh, further down there, you will see about four coastal buses, and there are fears that these buses are the contingent of the counter-protesters. Uh, they are locking there, and um, there is so much apprehension in the air. In fact, when they arrived, the protesters told everyone to go live so that we could capture the proceedings. So, so far, they have still been uh, there uh, at a standstill. Uh, they are yet to uh, move towards the... Uh, ambience so of the uh, so, so these are the mobilized Stadium are, in Abuja. Are, are the police but, uh, also they, going to tell them about the court order that they must not violate the court order that they must not pass be a lodge around there except for the stadium where the protesters are as the police engage them as regards the court order for now for now for now if you look further down like I told you they are just packed in there some uh, seems to be moving down to the stadium. So um, it's very difficult to tell if they are uh, they are going to organize their protest outside the national stadium. Uh, but um, so far, there's been a strong uh, defiance of the commissioner of police plea. Uh, you, if you look at uh, just in front of me, uh, you would see some of the protesters crossing the road that no protest had started. No, no protest is holding inside the Moshud Abiola Stadium in Abuja, and that is the counsel of the, the directive of the police commissioner based on the court um, order, based on the court judgment that uh, they should stay in a restricted area. But even the protesters are saying that they are yet to see the court order, uh, so uh, that is a bit in, also in dispute. So that is the situation now that there is bit, uh, there, there is uh, some considerable apprehension in the air. Uh, people are worried that the four coastal buses are contingent of the counter protesters. So uh, meanwhile, we are keeping vigil to see the, how the event unfolds. Well, Wenga Shiru, you know, you remember NSAS. During NSAS, when there was a clash between pro government protesters and uh, anti. Uh, and NSAS protesters. There were some young men in that Abuja carrying long, long sticks. And they converted those long sticks into weapons, started uh, destroying vehicles, and started beating people up. Have you seen anybody with uh, those uh, golf, golf, uh, golf like uh, club clubs, you know, they're made of wood, you know, of uh, strong uh, wood? Have you seen anything like that? Fortunately, uh, we've not cited any 
uh, violence or look like violence instruments from either of the camps. Uh, so far, we can see placards, we can see flags, and people demonstrating and protesting fervently to end the hunger in the land and to also end bad governance. And they have also called for the reversal of the fuel subsidy removal. So those are the overwhelming, those are the clear demands of the protesters so far till this moment in time. All right, so we hear the clear demands of the protesters. How about the demands of the anti-protesters? You know, what's on their placard? What are they saying? And then how will they manage space? Because all of them have to be inside the Moshuda Biola Stadium, or at least around there. I mean, how is the police going to manage uh, to ensure that all of them remain at that uh, stadium without clashing? Yeah, like I said, um, if you look at the, if you look further down the, uh, you can cite about four coastal buses, and um, right now it's uh, presumably it's, it looks like um, they are just waiting in the wings to find uh, the right. I, I really do not want to speculate, but uh, the presence has raised so much apprehension in the air. It has raised so much concerns and tension that. Um, their presence seem a bit malignant to the essence of this process so far. Anyway, thank you very much, Benga Ashiro. We'll keep in touch with you. Uh, the question is, who goes to a protest with four coaster buses? Oh, That's uh, yeah. a very interesting development. Yeah. In fact, we can count more than four more buses. Than four. Yeah. Like more. Anyway. Hello, my wonderful people. As we are finished watching this interesting video, Please, I want to see your comment, your contribution, your opinion in the comment section. Like I said earlier, let us do it constructively. Tell me what you think about this uh, video that you have just watched and also about the platform. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please remember to subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video and remain blessed.